Hello fellow doctors and anesthetists. In today's video, we are going to discuss thromboelastography and rotem. These are point of care tests and are viscoelastic measures of coagulation. Very commonly used in anesthesia and intensive care to see the coagulation status of the patient. And these are very important questions for your exams like EDAC, FRCA and even your training exams like the MD exam. So let's get started. First, we will discuss thromboelastography. So here we are discussing basically what looks like a machine of a thromboelastography. It has a disposable cuvette which is heated to a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius and it rotates at an axis of 5 degrees. We put 0.35 ml of blood in this cuvette and then a pin is inserted into this blood. Now, As the clot, blood will clot around the pin, the rotating cuvette will transmit these rotations to the blood and through the blood to the pin and this will produce torsion in the pin which is transmitted by a torsion wire to an electronic recorder and a display and the display will show the graph. Well, this is what the thromboelastograph looks like. It has a few parameters, the R time, the K time, the alpha angle, the maximum amplitude and the LY30. What is the R time? R time is the clot initiation time. It is the time for the amplitude of the clot to reach 2 mm. From the beginning to the time when we reach 2 mm amplitude, it is the R time. K time is the clot formation time and it is the time taken for the amplitude to reach from 2 mm to 20 mm. Next is the maximum amplitude. It represents the clot firmness. The higher the clot firmness, the higher will be the maximum amplitude. Next is LY30. Now LY30 represents the amplitude of the clot at 30 minutes and thus it represents slices. The more the decrease in the amplitude, the higher is the LY30. And last is the alpha angle which is, represents the rate of clot formation. Now the graph above is a graph of a normal patient and now we'll see how the graph looks in a patient who has an abnormal coagulation state. First, we'll discuss thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia is a decreased platelet count. Now, whenever there will be decreased platelet count, clot initiation and clot formation will take more time. So, the R time and the K time will increase. Also, the firmness of the clot will be decreased because of decreased platelets. So, the maximum amplitude will decrease. And the rate at which the clot is formed will also decrease. And so, the alpha angle will also decrease. The same thing will also be seen in coagulopathy, where also the clot formation and clot initiation will take more time and hence increase in R and K time and the maximum firmness of the clot will decrease so a decrease in maximum amplitude and the rate of formation of the clot will also decrease so a decrease in alpha angle. Now we will see fibrinolysis. Fibrinolysis is a state in which there is a very rapid clot dissolution so the clot after formation which will dissolve very fast uh, and so because of this there will be increase in LY30. The amplitude of the clot at 30 minutes will decrease and also the maximum amplitude of the clot will also decrease. Last is hypercoagulable state. In a hypercoagulable state, there is a very rapid clotting and a very firm clots are formed. And there is also an increase in rate of the clot formation. So we will have an increase, a decrease in R time, a decrease in K time and a very high alpha angle and a very high maximum amplitude. Now we will discuss rotational thromboelastometry that is ROTEM. The apparatus is very similar uh, to thromboelastography but there are a few differences. The first one is that in thromboelastography, the cuvette used to rotate over in thromboelastometry, the pin is rotating. The second difference is in thromboelastometry, the signals were carried via torsion wire, but here a fiber optic cable is being used. And the third difference is in thromboelastography, it was difficult to differentiate between thrombocytopenia clot infected deficiencies and other states. So here we add certain activators and inhibitors, and also we use different paths of blood activation, clotting activation, so that we can test the intrinsic and the extrinsic pathway separately and we can also see whether there is any other drug present like heparin or the patient is in a fibrinolytic state. So in all there are five tests which are performed. These are XTEM, INTEM, FIBTEM, APTEM and HEPTEM. In XTEM activation of blood is done by tissue factor thromboplastin so it tests the extrinsic pathway of coagulation. In INTEM activation is done by a contact phase so it tests the intrinsic pathway of coagulation. FIBTEM is XTEM where antiplatelet agent cytosolation D is added and uh, aptem is an XTEM where antifibrinolytic agent epidinin or tranexamic acid is added to the blood. Heptem is an intem where heparinase is added to blood. The parameters which are used are very similar to thromboelastography but have a different nomenclature. The clotting time is the K R time, the clot formation time is the K time, the maximum clot firmness is the maximum amplitude and the LY30 is same as thromboelastography. So an XTEM, NTEM, EPTEM and HEPTEM will look like a normal thromboelastograph in a normal patient. However, 
normal symptom because of addition of an antiplatelet agent will resemble thrombocytopenia and it will have a decreased CT clotting time, a decreased clot formation time and a decreased maximum clot firmness. Now we will see how we can use these different types of tests to differentiate between different abnormal states. First we will talk about a heparinized patient. Now the patient is having heparin in his blood. So the intrinsic pathway will be normal. However the extrinsic pathway will be normal because heparin does not affect the extrinsic pathway. So here we will have a normal XTEM, a normal FIBTEM and a normal EPTEM because all of these are extrinsic pathway tests. However, the INTEM will be abnormal. Here there will be an increase in the clotting time and the clot formation time and a decrease in the maximum clot firmness. However, HEPTEM, in HEPTEM we add heparinase to the blood. This heparinase will digest the heparin present in the patient's blood and the graph will appear a normal graph. The second is a patient on warfarin. In Warfarin uh, or vitamin K deficiency, these affect the extrinsic pathway. So, XTEM, EPTEM, they will be abnormal. There will be an increase in clotting time, an increase in clot formation time, and, decrease, and a decrease in maximum clot firmness. Now, the FIBTEM, which is already has an increased clotting and clot formation time, it will further increase, and a very thin graph with a very low amplitude will be formed. The INTEM and HEPTEM, which are of uh, the intrinsic pathway, tests of intrinsic pathway, they will be normal. So here you can see in thromboelastography it will be it would have been very difficult to differentiate between a patient who was on heparin and a patient who was on warfarin, whereas here it is very easy to do so. Next is thrombocytopenia. In thrombocytopenia, the FIBTEM will be normal, and rest of all the uh, graphs will be deranged because platelet will affect both extrinsic and intrinsic pathway. However, because in FIBTEM there already is an antiplatelet agent, so the graph will be very similar to FIBTEM. Now let's talk about talk about fibrinolysis. In fibrinolysis, uh, XTEM, INTEM and HEPTEM, they will form a graph which is similar to a fibrinolytic graph of thrombolastography. And FIBTEM will have a thin graph but the shape will change, there will be an increase in L by 30. However, an EPTEM will be normal because the addition of tranexamic acid or epitonin will lead to res resolution of the fibrinolytic state and the graph will be, that will be formed will be a normal one. So this was all about thromboelastography and rotum. These are very important topics. If you have any doubts, you can ask it in the comment section. And if you like the video, you can subscribe to our channel and like our video. Thank you.